and welcome to YBA K Sports Sunday. I'm TJ Horgan. I'm alongside John, Brendan, Liam, and Jason. In this week in sports, the Boston Celtics signed guard Terrence Williams to a multi-year deal. He was coming off a 10-day contract. Guys, what do you think this contract will do for the Celtics in the long run? I think this will do absolutely nothing. I don't know why they made this deal, and I don't know why they made it a multi-year deal. I mean, he was signed to a 10-day contract before this. I think they should just made it maybe finish out the year. He has 11 minutes in four games. That's not impressive. I think they just needed an extra guy on the team. I mean, they're losing guys left and right to injuries. Rondo's been out for the season. Paul Pierce got injured the other day. Right. It's just they're losing people left and right. They need more bodies on, out on the team. I agree with you. They, they do need a body. And so far, he has just played four games. He's averaging 3.3 points a game and one and a half assists per game. Liam and Jason? And when I look at this, the first thing that I think is depth. When you look at this Celtics team, they're really low on depth with all the injuries. You look at Rondo, you look at Sullinger, and they're really just falling apart with their, like, their depth everywhere. So they needed someone to come in and do something for them. Yeah, it's true, and we don't know when Rondo is going to be back. He may not be back at the beginning of the season, so I think you did need to sign him for a multi-year deal, knowing, one, that he, Rondo may not be back, and two, how he's going to perform. I don't know that he'll pull in Adrian Peterson, but I don't think he's going to be the same guy, especially uh, right when he comes back. Yeah, looking at the Rose injury, it's probably pretty similar there. That's a good point. Yeah, guys, I mean, you're right. This is another body for them to have, but let's face it. He's not going to change this team. He's not going to propel them to the NBA Finals or anything like that. Oh, no. Sure, he's another body off the bench, but in real uh, perspective, I don't see him really doing anything. They must have saw value know. in his contract because you yeah. can get someone equal or better than him on the free agent market right now. Yeah, well, the thing is they need multiple things. They need a guard and... They need someone who can rebound, missing man. Selinger. And he does both of those things, perhaps not at a large rate, but they need another body who can play anywhere on the floor. At this yeah, point. They needed a swing man, and that's what he is. It's true. All right, right now we're going to go to a Celtics package that Jason did for us. Jason took a trip to the TD Garden to see the Celtics face the Golden State Warriors. See you here at the TD Garden. Uh, Celtics playing close to the Golden State Warriors. Celtics coming back from a five-game West Coast road trip, which two and three, meeting the Phoenix Suns and the Utah Jazz. Warriors coming off their 109-105 loss to the New York Knicks. Seven three down 54. Uh, my friend Brad and my grandpa hoping the same result will happen uh, as in Madison Garden. My dad will have for a different result. Let's find out what happens. Sitting in section 327, row 2, seats 11 and 12, my dad and I took in the Celtics game on Friday. The Celtics got off to a good start in the first quarter. An 8-0 run put the Celtics up 31-20, and Avery Bradley's defense shut down Stephen Curry. Golden State came back in the second to make a game of it. They closed with a 9-2 run to cut the Boston lead to 4 at the break to make it 50-46. Pop Pierce had 18 points for the green team. The Celtics extended their halftime lead to seven in the third quarter. Jeff Green came off the bench to score 13 of the 17 points in the second half. In the final quarter, Paul Pierce and the Celtics took control. Pierce scored 26 points in all. The story coming into the game was a hot shooting by Golden State Stephen Curry. And even though he finished with 25 points, including three for 13 in the second half, when Pierce and the Celtics defense set them home, home losers 94 to 86. I'm Jason Siegel for YBA Sports. Great piece you did in the field. Uh, for the rest of you guys, what do you think the Celtics should do as of now to make the playoffs, and if they do make the playoffs, to advance? I think the biggest thing they have to do is keep everyone healthy. Health wins championships. That's something you see when you look at, I know, NBA, NFL, not the same thing, but look at that New York Giants and what they did in their Super Bowl runs. Going to the playoffs, all their guys healthy, win the Super Bowl. you got to rest Garnett, rest Pierce, get them ready for the playoffs so they can excel in the playoffs and maybe win a first round game if they get the seventh seed so we'll see mm. I, I agree I mean you need players healthy if Garnett and Pierce go down 
I don't see the Celtics even making the playoffs, truth be told. See, John, I, John and Brendan, I would have to disagree with you guys. I think that the Celtics need to find their five best players, and they need to get their five best players on the field the most. And the five best players aren't clearly defined right now. You need to find the best guys on your team. You need to get them onto the court and let them mesh so you can have a hope of getting to the playoffs. Right now, they're not ahead in the standings, so they can't just rest their best players right now in hopes that they'll make the playoffs. Yeah, like and, the Celtics uh, really there was a little bit of a scare for Celtics fans in terms of injuries. Jeff Green, I believe, was in the third quarter. He was driving, and then uh, he got hit. He was Came down stayed hard down. On his elbow. Yeah, and he stayed down for about a minute and a half, and he was holding on to his wrist. Uh, going to the bench and then he came back went five for five and scored 13 points uh so if you lose jeff green uh and then so that basically would leave jordan crawford and avery bradley who and courtney lee at that point bradley was out with was benched with five fouls uh so a bit of a scare for the celtics i think what the celtics really need to do is give rests when they can to garnett and pierce but definitely not in pivotal games i mean if you're playing a game against the charlotte bobcats Give Garnett a rest. He's going to need it. Those knees are definitely on the old side. So if I'm the Celtics, you got to give Garnett and Pierce some breaks, but enough that they're still productive. In a rather interesting story, two days ago, the first person to ever meet North Korea's new leader, Kim Jong-un, in North Korea, came back, and that person was former basketball player and current crazy person, <laughs> Dennis Rodman. <laughs> Dennis Rodman went to North Korea and took a trip, hung out with North Korea's leader, Kim Jong-un, saw basketball games, had dinner, had meals with him. And what do you guys just seem to make of this whole deal with Dennis Rodman going to North Korea as their only representative, the United States' only representative, since Kim Jong-un came into power? It's definitely interesting to see one of the craziest people in the United States go and meet a dictator. I mean, honestly, you look at it. They're both pretty crazy. I think it's they a kind great, of fit. Yeah. I mean, and considering that he may have helped soften the differences between North Korea and the U.S. Well, getting, what he I said don't, I don't think this getting was, Obama <laughs> to at least try to call well, Kim Jong Un. Well, I don't think it's this interesting. Was, I don't think this was anything political. I mean, as T.J. mentioned, exactly. Kim Jong Un enjoys basketball, and they had a. Three Globetrotters uh, had a scrimmage with the North Korean team. They tied 110 to 110. And there's also a report that they, <laughs> there's a TV documentary being produced. And this was also part of that. And it was a peaceful meeting. So it wasn't anything political, at least from what's being reported. When well, I heard uh, Dennis Rodman actually, well, Kim Jong un asked Rodman to have Obama call him. He did, that's true. And when Rodman came back, he did talk to George Stephanopoulos of ABC News. And Rodman, I have the quote here, Rodman said about Kim Jong-un, I don't condone what he does, but as, a per but as a person to person, he's my friend. What do you think this means for future relations with the United States and North Korea? Well, let me just say, I thought I'd seen it all after Manti Teo, but this is right up there with there, with one of the weirdest stories. Like, yeah. what is 2013 get going to be remembered for weird story true <laughs> i mean i think rodman's almost blind to what's going on over there in north korea he considers king john un a friend i mean this man's a murderer yeah dennis rodman is just out of his mind altogether <laughs> i mean he probably just feels at home there it's just a crazy <laughs> crazy country for a crazy man i mean i can't blame dennis rodman here he went to north korea on sort of an excursion i don't think he's agreeing with their politics and certainly kim jong-un how he set up prison camps and all of that terrible stuff but i don't think dennis rodman is going over there as a political statement as much as he is just because he is absolutely nuts i mean did you see that suit he was wearing in that interview a money suit with like, I don't even know what he was in so his many lip. piercings all over his face. <laughs> Those things are the crazy. most distracting things I've ever seen. I can't look at him and just... They had to go to the faraway <laughs> shot. Just to like, <laughs> you have to respect his individuality. Yeah, that guy is so. absolutely crazy. It's kept him relevant. Well, they, you, you remember back when he played with the Bulls, he had all the color in his hair? Yeah. yeah just well, a crazy guy. The fact is, Dennis Rodman and Kim Jong-un both have a passion for basketball. That's just like me and my friends. Certainly, at a they're at a much bigger extent. They do differences, but they still have wait. Which one of your friends is Kim Jong Un? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not. But I'm just 
They, they both like that. Uh, a hobby for basketball, and they both enjoy it. So it was it was for basketball. It was nothing political. Absolutely. Um, and again, it was possibly for a TV documentary. That's a report coming from CNN. Um, though I thought it was illegal for Americans to do that in North Korea, but I don't know. Well, you heard it here first. Jason's yep, Dennis exactly. Rodman. <laughs> no. Well. well, Dennis Rodman did say that Obama said to uh, about Obama, you know, Kim Jong Un doesn't want war. He just wants Obama to call him. I mean, to discuss basketball. They have phones too. in North Korea. He could pick up the he, phone. He even he said wanted. he wanted to discuss basketball. TJ. Is Obama not returning his calls or something? <laughs> uh, either way, Kim Jong uh, Dennis Rodman said that. Obama loves basketball, and Kim Jong-un loves basketball, and they could pursue diplomatic relations over the topic of basketball. Do you guys see North Korea and the United States sparking <laughs> sparking anything with basketball? I see a high-stakes basketball game coming up, and this was Mike's, our producer's <laughs> idea. High-stakes basketball game, winner gets the new codes. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> That's, that's why I, I gave you, you credit, credit for that, that Mike. to our producer, Mike, uh, Mike Sullivan. That would actually be a pretty interesting game. I think that'd get pretty good ratings. Uh, I, I know I watch. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. The next NBA uh, 2K game. That Kim Jong Un versus Barack Obama. That would be the most watched program ever. If Obama, <laughs> if Obama faced Kim Jong Un in a one-on-one -on -one basketball game. In another story, Magic My Johnson. My money's on Obama. <laughs> Magic Johnson offered up one million dollars to LeBron James to offered up um, one million dollars to LeBron James if he could just enter the dunk contest one year. Magic Johnson said he is there every year and he's putting up a one million dollar reward for LeBron James or anybody who can beat LeBron James in the dunk contest. Guys, what do you think of this? He's not going to do it. Simply won't. He hasn't considered doing it really for the past like four or five years at this point. Well, LeBron did tell ESPN's Lisa Salters that he doesn't have a response yet. I feel as though LeBron, if he was going to say no, he would say it right off the bat. He would say, you know, I'm not going to be bribed or anything. But if you look at it this way, LeBron could take the money and he could bring a new revolution to the dunk contest, if you will. Yeah, and at this point, All-Star Weekend it seems to be more entertainment for the fans. And, you know, LeBron certainly... A lot of fans uh, don't exactly like them, especially in Cleveland, so maybe you should entertain them and try to mend, you know, with the Cleveland fans. 